This course is about data frames in R. However, before we can discuss data frames, we need to go through some basics. One of the basics we need to go through is a discussion on vectors. So we will discuss in this video what are vectors with respect to R programming. Before we can discuss vectors, we need to understand what are the basic data types supported in R. So I will list out the data types which are supported in R. We have the character data type which takes individual characters. This can be alphabets or numbers or special characters. Then we have numeric data type which can take any kind of numbers. It can be a whole number, a natural number or an integer, any kind of number can be considered as numeric. It can also be decimal numbers, etc. Then we have a specific kind of numeric data type that is integers, which only takes integers. Then we have a data type called complex, which takes complex numbers. And lastly, we have a data type called boolean or logical, which takes only true and false values. Now we are almost at the point of our discussion in this video that is about vectors. Vector is a basic data structure in R. So let us go through what are the other data structures in R. I will just list out the data structures right now. During the course, we will discuss them in slight amount of details, but we will discuss one of them that is data frames in much more details. So the first data structure we have in R is vectors. Then we have lists. Then we have matrix, data frames, and factors. So what are vectors with respect to R programming? Vectors are data structures in R which contains elements of the same data type. Now you will see that later, vectors are different from lists, basically because vectors can contain only one data type, whereas lists can contain multiple data types. So a vector can contain any elements which can be of only one type, either they are of character type or numeric type or integer type or complex or logical type. Now let us see some examples of vectors in R. See that we can have vector of characters. So you can write C within brackets. You can give the individual characters like I have written here H followed by E, followed by L, followed by L, followed by O. So each individual character can be made into a vector. And similarly, we can have a vector of integers where I can say C within brackets, I can give the different numbers which form the part of the vector. Each number or each character that we have discussed so far are called elements of the vector. Similarly, we can have vector of strings. I can say C followed by bracket, followed by welcome to R, where welcome to and R are the elements of the vector. Notice that we use the function C to declare a vector. So C followed by a bracket and within the bracket we have to give the individual elements of a vector to define a vector. Now let us see this on RStudio. So here we are in RStudio. So I start declaring a vector. I say C followed by bracket. Then I give a string called Kaushik. Then I give another string called Anuj. Then I give another string called Amarendra followed by a comma, then I give Deepshree, comma, Anita, comma, Arindram. So I have made a vector of strings and this vector contains six elements. Now I make another vector and here I am giving some numbers, so I 34, 34, 36, then 53, 57, and 61. So this is now a vector of numbers or integers. I will create another vector. So this contains some slightly larger numbers. So you can see that we are able to create a vector and we have incidentally 
kept six elements in each of the vectors, but that is not necessary. The vector can have any number of elements and each vector can be of different number of elements. It will soon become clear why I am doing it like this uh, because we will be using this for further discussion in this video. So now we have created three vectors. Let us run this code to see what happens. So I take my first vector that I declared and I run it. You see that the vector is got created and the vector has got six elements. I run my second vector. So the vector, it shows you the elements which it is there. So it shows you one followed, well, that means there are six elements and I run the third vector and you can see the vector is created as well. Once we create a vector, we need to be able to refer to the vector. Now to be able to refer to the vector, we need a variable. So how do we assign a vector to a variable? Or how do we name a vector by a variable? So we will see that right now. The method is, that we name a variable, we can say the variable name is v underscore age followed by a less than sign and a dash. This is the assignment operator in R and after the assignment operator we can state the vector. So you can see that I have made a vector of integers and this vector is now assigned to the variable called v underscore age. So I can refer to this vector by the name v underscore age. Let us see this in R studio now. So here we are back in our studio. We have our vectors. Now let us assign each of the vectors to a variable. So the first vector, vector I assign to a variable named v underscore name. So you can see that I write v underscore name followed by less than and a dash. The second vector I assign to a variable named v underscore age. And the third one I assign to a variable called v underscore savings. So we have our three variables now. And each of the three variables contain a vector. So we can now run this command so that the assignment takes place. So I run my first command and you see that the vector has been assigned to the variable by the name v underscore name. I do the same for the second one. And I do the same for the third one also. I just change it to savings per annum. So I have changed the variable name. So you can see that the advantage of using IDE, I can make such changes. So I run it and now the vector has been assigned to a variable by the name v underscore savings per annum. I can see these variables now. I can just type v underscore name and you see that now this contains a vector with six elements and the elements are shown or one I, once I give the name of the variable. I can do the same for v underscore age and you can see the elements of this vector as well. I do the same thing for the last vector that we created and you can see that this is also a vector of six elements and the elements are shown here. I could have written this within our program as well. So I will just copy the variable names and put them on my program. So I can use them later on whenever I want to. So we have the three variable names. So I can see the vectors by just running all of these three together as well. I know that I can run part of the code in one shot. So I just run it and you can see that the vectors are created. Once we have our vector, we can check the data type of the vector. We know that the vector can take elements of only one data type. So the vector should essentially have only one data type and that type can be checked by using the command type of. So we can type type of and within brackets give the name of the vector and it should tell me what type of vector this is. So let us see this in RStudio. So we are back in RStudio. Let us just copy the variable names once again so that we can find the type and then I say type of and within brackets give the variable name. 
I do the same for the other two variables also. I say type of followed by bracket and then close the bracket. Now let's run these commands to see what are the type of these variables. So I say type of v underscore name, you see that it's a character type vector. Then I say type of v underscore age and you see that it's a double. Notice that the output is also a vector of one element. So this is also double. We can find the number of elements in a vector. The number of elements in a vector defines the length of a vector. So to find the number of elements in a vector, we can give the command length followed by the vector name within brackets. So if I say length within brackets, I give the name of the vector. It gives me the number of elements in the vector. Let us check it on our studio. We are back in our studio. So I copy the variable names once again and create another copy of that. Now let's add the function length. So I say length followed by bracket and within the brackets I give the name of the variable. Notice that our studio is doing checking of the syntax and tells you whether there is a syntax error in the code what you have written. So this is the advantage of using an IDE. So I have given the length function for each of the three variables. Now I run these commands. Notice that all the three variables have got six elements, so it says the length is six. Now let's make another variable. Let's call it v underscore dummy and create this as a vector of some integers. I will give some arbitrary integers. So these are arbitrary numbers and they don't mean anything. So I'm just creating a vector. So now my vector is ready. Let us see the length of this vector. So I say length and within the brackets I give v underscore dummy. So and I run this. So first I create the vector and then check the length of this vector. Notice that this vector has got 12 elements. You can count and see whether there are 12 elements or not. So we can just make a change. I add another element to it and recreate this vector and now we check the length and notice that it has got 13 elements. We can perform various statistical functions on the vectors. So this statistical operations can be conducted mainly on the numeric vectors uh, some statistical operations can also be conducted on other type of data but basically the statistical operations are limited to the numeric vectors. So let us see the statistical operations which we can perform on a vector. So we can find the sum of all the elements of a vector by giving this function sum. So if I say sum followed by a bracket and then give, give the vector name it will return me the sum of all the elements in the vector. Similarly if I say mean followed by a bracket and then give the vector name, it will give me the mean, that is the average of all the values of the elements of the vector. Then I can find the median, so I can say median followed by bracket and then the vector name, it will give me the median value of the elements of the vector. I can find the standard deviation by giving SD and within brackets I give the name of the vector, it will give me the standard deviation of all the elements of the vector. I can use a function called summary and within summary, if I give the name of the vector, it will give me a basic summary of the complete vector. It will give me the quartiles, it will give me the median, it will give me the mean, etc. So let us see this in action on our studio. Now we are in our studio. Let us conduct the statistical operations on the vector v underscore dummy. So I say sum v underscore dummy. And let us run this. So you see that it sums up all the elements and says that the sum is 774. You can verify this uh, yourself if you want to verify but however I can tell you the result is correct. Now let us find the mean 
So I will go back to my program and I will write mean v underscore dummy. Let us write the code first. So then I say median of v underscore dummy. Then let's find the standard deviation sd v underscore dummy. And lastly, let's see the summary. So I say summary v underscore dummy. Now let's run these commands one by one. So I say mean of v underscore dummy and it gives me the mean as 59.53 something. So similarly, I can find the median. So it gives me the median as 62. You can verify all these figures. Then we can find the standard deviation. It gives me the standard deviation. Lastly, let's see what it does when I say summary of v underscore dummy. So when I say summary, it gives me a lot of information. See that the first information it gives me is that the minimum value is 10. The first quartile is at 47. The median is at 62 that we found out previously also using the median command. Then the mean is 59.54 which also we found out earlier. The third quartile is at 76 and the maximum value is 98. So you see that the summary gives me all the details regarding the vector. We can conduct other kind of statistical operations on a vector as well. For example, supposing we want to see the distribution of numbers in a vector, we can create a histogram. To create a histogram, we can use the command hist and within the brackets give the name of the vector. So if I say hist within brackets v underscore age, it will give me the histogram of age that is stored in this vector called v underscore age. Let us see this in R Studio next. So now here in R Studio, we say hist followed by v underscore dummy. You notice that R Studio gives me a help in terms of telling me the variable names, etc. what is possible. So when I execute this command, it gives me the histogram. So you can see that it has plotted the frequencies of the different intervals. It has considered these things by itself. We have control where we can say what are the bins going to be, what are the bin size going to be, etc. Uh, however, that will be we will dis discuss slightly later on. So you have seen that the histogram is created and it shows the different values and the frequencies and we can do many more operations. Another very useful operation that we conduct on vectors is to find the correlation between two vectors. So we can find the correlation between two vectors. For this we require to use a separate library. Now this is not available in the base library so we require to use a library called caret. In the caret library there is a function called cor. So if I say cor followed by bracket and give the two vectors for whom the, I want to find the correlation, it will give me the correlation. So let us see this in R Studio. So now let us first give the library command to load the library. So I say library caret and then in the library caret we have the cor function. So I say cor followed by the two vectors, I will give v underscore age and v underscore savings per annum. So there we have the command. Now let's run them. First I will load the library. So I say load the library. So it has loaded whatever is required to be loaded. And then I give the correlation command. So I execute this command. And notice that it has given me a correlation number which is a negative number so it's a negative correlation between these two variables. To understand the correlation we could create a scatter plot. The scatter plot should give a better picture of the correlation between two variables. So to create a scatter plot we require a library called ggplot2. So we will have to load the library ggplot2 using the library command and then we can give a command called qplot and in qplot we can give the two variable names which contain the two vectors whose correlation we want to find out. So we can say qplot followed by 
bracket, then V underscore age, comma, V underscore salary, for example, and close the bracket, which will give you a scatter plot of the two variables. Let us see this in R Studio. Now we will try to create the scatter plot between the age and the savings per annum. So I load the library, library ggplot2, and then I give the qplot command. So I say qplot v underscore age, comma, v underscore savings per annum. So now I have my commands ready. So I first load my library. Libraries got loaded. Now I try to create the scatter plot. So I say run, and there you see the scatter plot is created. On one axis you have got age, and one axis you've got the salary savings per annum. That concludes our discussion on vectors. So we discussed the following. We discussed what are vectors. How do we create vectors and how do we assign them to variables? How do we find the type of a vector? Then we discussed how to find the number of elements in a vector. And lastly, we concluded by conducting some statistical operations on a vector or more than one vector also. I have attached all the code that we discussed during this video. So you can go through that and play with it.